morning everyone and welcome to walk four of my March challenge to try and achieve the Hadrian's Wall long distance path distance in just 28 days. I'm here in the village of Hartist, that's the village just down there behind me. I just passed the lovely Crown, which is the village pub which has fantastic food. Um, obviously closed at the moment. And then next door is the church, Parish Church of All Saints which dates to the 15th century and grade one listed. So my walk today is going to take me along this little ridge of land in front of me here. It goes down into the village of Brockley and then from Brockley I'm going to pass Brockley Hall which I've never actually properly looked at and then follow country lanes and footpaths back round into the village of Hartist. Total distance of about 11 kilometres I think I measured it which is roughly seven miles, something like that. walking along this footpath and I've come across loads and loads of massive deer footprints. Um, I think round here we probably get roe deer and the likelihood is that they'll live in one of the, the nearby woods over here. There's another woodland back there as well. And a grey heron just flew over. It's quite far away so I couldn't get a shot but it was making its loud call as it flew across. That was pure magic, wasn't it? I don't think I've ever seen so many deer so close. And there were a few stags in there because you could see the antlers. That was just wonderful. I reckon there must have been 30, 30 deer. And oh, yeah, for all I know, I know, could have been the ones that made the footprints that I saw earlier. But there's plenty of footprints all along the floor here where I am, so. They obviously live in this area, but that was just wonderful. Well, it's not every day that you see a massive herd of deer, and it's definitely not every day that you see a massive herd of deer twice, and they are still sitting just on the top of the field up there. So I've just got another photo, couple of photos and some video and I zoomed in on the photo and I counted no less than 50 deer and I think there's still some more behind that I couldn't see. Um, just looking at them now, they've just run off into the other fields so I probably won't be able to get any more photos or videos. But they were just fantastic. I was just walking along the field again along this edge towards Broccoli and looked up and I was like, hmm, doesn't look quite right. It doesn't look like a tree or a bunch of trees. So I just zoomed in on the camera and I was like, well, hey, there they are again just so lovely to see them and I've just never seen such a massive herd before. I've seen some herds on the hardest road down from Bury St Edmunds when I come back from work sometimes. No more than say 20 or so but yeah, well over 50 there. It's just fantastic. 
So I'm just coming up to Brockley Church and Brockley Hall, which is just ahead over here. The church um, dates to the 14th century, given a grade two start listing, and is probably contemporary with the house alongside, which is um, believed to be at least late 13th century or early 14th century. So really, really old for this area as well. So I've come into the graveyard of Brockley Church to try and find the base of a cross and I've just spotted it ahead of me. These crosses tend to be made in the medieval period between the 10th and the 16th century and uh, this one is protected as a scheduled ancient monument so I thought I'd come and have a little look. There actually used to be a medieval settlement and you can see some of the earthworks and stuff around here where it's been terraced here around by the church and there is another moat over there as well. And so that used to be the site of Brockley in the medieval period before it was moved down over where we can see over there. So I've just passed an area that's called Pickles Farmstead. Now it's not marked on the present day OS map, but if you look back at the first edition OS maps, it actually shows the location of a farm there. Now, the research that I've done says there's no visible remains, but just walking past, you could see remains of walls, steps, and the outline of some sort of buildings as well. So there are some remains there. I've got no idea when the farmstead was originally made or constructed, but clearly it's, it's fallen out of use and been demolished at some point in the last 150 years. Thanks very much for watching and if you're enjoying these videos don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe and also ring the bell to keep up to date with any videos that I post. Now stay tuned as uh, the next walk is going to be quite an interesting one. I've got a few historic buildings that I'm visiting, nice windmill and also the county high point. So I'm going to be starting a walk at Hawkton and I think it's going to be about eight or nine miles so it'll be a nice walk and I think the weather is due to be pretty good tomorrow. Morning everyone, I've just left the village of Somerton um, behind me, so just over there you can see the little parish church that dates to the 13th century and is grade one listed. I'm going to be doing probably, sorry I can just see a squirrel jumping between the trees over there, I'm going to be doing a probably eight, eight or nine miles today. I'm heading over towards Hawkerden first, then I'm going to head past a few old houses up to Reed where I'm going to be at the highest point in Suffolk and then follow part of the Berry to Clare walk back. Um, I'm just on the Berry to Clare walk now as well. So this, this route, I'd say probably a quarter of it follows the Berry to Clare walk, which is, is well way marked. Um, but there's also some really nice views. Ooh, sorry. Ooh. Really nice views on this one because Somerton sits up on a bit of a ridge uh, about 100 metres above sea level and the valley floor is probably only about 40 metres so there's a good you know 60, 50 or 60 metres of um, elevation difference so you get some really nice views. When I was up near the church I could see Hawkerton, I could see the ridge behind, maybe about five or six miles I could see. It was lovely.
So I'm just coming into Hawkerdon and up to St Mary's Church, which is also Grade 1 listed, but dates to the 15th century. Now inside there is a 12th century font and wood carvings, so it's likely that it replaced an older church. So just opposite St Mary's Church is Hawkerdon Hall. Now this hall is Grade 2 listed and timber framed and dates to the 15th century. along this nice little high ridge of land with Hawkerton just down there behind me and I've just noticed that I can see the mast over here which actually marks the highest point in Suffolk at 128 meters above sea level so I'm heading over there and then I'm going to go across country past Reed and then back down to Somerton where you can actually see the church just on the skyline over there now just ahead I think it's only about another quarter of a mile is a tower mill and this tower mill dates to 1840 and it is given a grade 2 listing. That was a nice little treat, wasn't it? Just the sound of falling water into the pool and the little, um, the old water pump just tucked in the trees as well, which is lovely. Now, up ahead is Purton Hall Farmhouse. I've never seen this building before and it's, it's grade one listed and dates possibly to the late 13th century. So again, one of the oldest timber framed medieval houses in the area. So it should be quite interesting to have a look. Just across the field over there, you might be able to just make out Cordell Farmhouse. Now that is a grade two listed 17th century timber framed farmhouse. <laughs> So I'm just heading up alongside what appear to be maybe some kind of fishery or something like that. There's a series of terraced lakes. I think there's about six of them. Can't see any fish or anything or any platforms that you'd fish from, but it, you know, it gives me that sort of impression that they might be fisheries. But I was so lucky that in the woods just over here, there was a, a pheasant just walking past, but it was a pheasant that I'd never seen before in my life. And having a quick bit of research, thankfully I've got good signal here, it was a Reeves's pheasant and I managed to capture just a few seconds of footage. And apparently they're, they're vulnerable globally. Um, having a look online, it said that if, if you were to shoot them here, it could face, you could face a hefty fine, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I couldn't find a population number or anything like that, but it was just really, really nice to see a bird that I've never seen before, never even heard of. Oh, I don't know if you can see, there's a kestrel and a heron over here, a bit too wide for you to see, but I can see some swans up ahead as well, mallards. There's quite a few water, water birds here, waterfowl. Let's see if I can spot anything else.
So I'm just following this long straight path now to the county high point. So on the OS map it shows 128 metres being just on the road to the left of the great big mast. But having a look online as I'm walking down here, it actually says that the county high point is 136 metres in Great Wood, which is over there. So I think I'm going to probably go to both. The walk that I planned goes past Great Wood anyway. We'll see. I'll go to the 128 metres first because I thought that was the highest point. And then we'll see if it's any higher over there. Well, this marks the highest point in Suffolk according to the Ordnance Survey map. This is 128 metres above sea level, right on this spot here. Now, according to Wikipedia and other sources, the highest point is in those woods over there. A few extra metres, but it's not marked on the OS map, so I thought I'd take the spot in first as the highest point marked, and then head over there. Some good views, actually. You can see a ridge of land, probably, eight or nine miles over that way. I think the reservoir's leaking a little bit. Look at this. Don't see stuff like that in this county very often. Maybe in the peat bogs of the lakes or the peat district, but look at that. It's just a sponge. But I'm free. So this what I'm walking alongside now is Great Wood. And according to Wikipedia and a few other sources, this is where the county high point actually is. Now there is a trackway going in, but I don't think it's a right of way at all. But yeah, according to Wikipedia, in the middle of this wood, is 136 metres above sea level. But I'm only a quarter of a mile, not even that, from where the Ordnance Survey show 128 metres above sea level, just by the big mast. And I refuse to believe I'm eight metres higher than that. If anything, it feels like I've come down slightly, but I haven't got an accurate GPS unit on me, so I can't measure it. Maybe I'll have to come back with my other GPS unit just to get an idea, as the accuracy for that one is, you know, up to a metre even for elevation, so maybe I'll have to come back and measure it from where I am now. But this is Great Wood, and I'm going to count that as a county high point. So I'm just following this nice wide bridle way along here to the village of Reed, and that's spelled R-E-D-E, -E, not R-E-A-D. And then on the other side, about a quarter of a mile or so, I'll then join the Berry to Clare Walk, which then turns south back into Somerton, where I started. So I've recently joined the Berry to Clare Walk, which leads me back into Somerton and back to the start of my route. But the Berry to Clare Walk is actually a 19 mile waymark trail that starts at Berry St Edmunds, which is that way, and ends at Clare, which is over that way. Um, if anyone is interested or wants to know more about the Berry to Clare Walk, I have got a short, a short book available and I've just put the link in the description below.
morning and welcome to a really windy Suffolk today. Um, I'm just walking around the village to add some more miles onto my Conqueror's Challenge. Going down towards Glemsford Mill and the River Glem over this way. And then probably cutting across to the Stour Valley Path, I'm going to go through the village, have a look at some of the old historic houses in the village centre uh, and then kind of make it up as I go along. So anywhere between four and eight miles today, something like that. So I'm just going to keep going until the rain starts. It's meant to start around lunchtime between 12 and 1, but some of the clouds are a bit grey at the moment, so there might be the odd shower. Now I came down to Glimpsford Mill um, a couple of weeks ago when we had a really harsh frost and it was absolutely beautiful. Really nice sort of meandering river, nice old listed building and it, it just didn't feel like I was in Suffolk and that's why I thought I'd head down there now. It's just such a nice place. Hopefully see some wildlife down there as well. So I just want to apologise for any wind noise or any background noise and stuff. So these storms are going over at the moment. We've had really strong winds up to 50, 55 miles an hour for the last two days. Um, it's now Saturday and it's meant to stop tomorrow at some point, but still even today we're getting 40, 45 mile an hour gusts and it's really sort of blowing through every now and then. So I do apologise if you can't hear me. <laughs> So I'm just walking along the path now towards Monk's Hall, which I'll show you in a minute. And I've just spotted a badger set. And I think it's actually the second one. I saw a badger set over in the woods over there, but I don't know if you can see, I'll get some other shots on the other camera, but there's definitely fresh holes been dug and they're certainly big enough to be badgers and there's plenty of them. So I bet there is a nice family of badgers that live around here. I'm just walking alongside Monk's Hall now and it's just behind the bushes there. Now this hall um, is grade two star listed and actually mainly dates to the 16th or 17th century, but they estimate that the core of the house is 15th century and it's absolutely beautiful. So just had to take a little detour off my original route because of a footpath closure over there by those trees. So I've kind of come round and along this field edge, which is also a public footpath. So I'm now approaching um, a house called Checkers. Now Checkers is a grade two star listed timber framed house as well. And this one dates to the 16th century. Hello and welcome to another walk that is to do with my Hadrian's Wall Challenge. Now today I'm going to be doing a circuit that takes in Fox Earth Meadows Nature Reserve. I'm going to head along the River Stour along part of the old railway line and then take in part of the River Glem where I was yesterday, Glimpsed Mill and then head back in through to the village back home. Now Fox Earth Meadows is just ahead and it's a really quite a unique nature reserve in the fact that it is managed purely for da um, damselflies and dragonflies as I think over half of all UK species are found in this one reserve. 
and then naturally having a really good insect population means that the bird population also flourishes as well. So it's a fantastic, although small reserve. There's no hides or anything, but there are a few footpaths around. So you can do little circuits and just see what's about. And uh, I'm gonna spend a bit of time there and see what I can find. So I've just left Fox Earth Meadows, it's just behind this fence you can see behind me there. And you immediately come out onto the old um, Snell Valley Railway line. So this line linked Sudbury to Haverhill um, and opened in 1865 and then eventually closed in 1967 as part of the beaching cuts. And there is um, sort of campaigns and stuff going on to get the line reopened. Um, there hasn't been any updates since 2017 but apparently it is a prime candidate for reopening as they're planning on building loads and loads of houses over in Haverhill and it'll improve transport from sort of Cambridge direction across. Well, that was an unexpected surprise, wasn't it? So I could see across the lake to uh, some swans, there were some moorhens, coots, mallards, and a pair of otters just swam past. Never been so close to an otter, not in the wild. Absolutely beautiful it was. Uh, definitely gonna come back here again. We've just joined the River Glen now, which you can see uh, beside me here. And I'm now coming up to Glen's of Mill, which is where I was at yesterday. But yesterday it was, <laughs> the weather was rubbish, wasn't it? Um, so hopefully it's gonna be a bit nicer in the sun. The wind's really starting to die down a little bit now. It's been a bit blowy. 
I was coming across the field so I came down through the trees over there and then skirted along the edge of the field so I could avoid a bit of road walking because it's quite a fast road and now literally just over there you can see through the trees the little bridge that I was standing on yesterday when I got a couple of shots looking down the river let's have a look what it looks like today in the sun 